For those of you who don't know, my name is Peter DeCaratree, and I'm the executive director of the new Secretariat for Stewardship and Development. Um, the Archbishop has created a series of kind of bigger departments, um, evangelization and catechesis, administration and finance, stewardship and development, uh, et cetera. And um, I'm very pleased to be here. Um, the theme of this year's appeal is do all things uh, for the glory of God. And it's based on the readings of the day during the second weekend of the appeal, which is the commitment weekend. Um, in the Corinthians reading that day. But as we get started, I'm just wondering if you all would turn with me. The manual in front of you is in the three ring binder. Uh, and for those of you online, uh, we, you can download the PDF of the manual. And on page six, if we could maybe play, pray the annual appeal prayer together as we get started today. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, you call each of us to be missionary disciples. As we strive to live a holy life, let all things we do be for your glory. Help us to follow in the footsteps of blessed Stanley Rother as we bear joyful witness to the gospel. Loving and gracious God, open our hearts to share in the missionary and ministry of the Archdiocese of Oklahoma City through the annual Catholic appeal. Strengthen our resolve to be like your son, Jesus Christ, to do all things for your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. So our agenda for today is uh, simply that I'd like to go over the, um, the gist of the appeal. Uh, I, we're gonna do a little review on the 2017 appeal so you, you know what happened and how it happened. Uh, we're gonna talk about the finances of the diocese a little bit so everybody understands how we get to the goals at a parish level for the appeal. Um, we're going to talk about what's new in 2018 in the appeal, plus staff rules, weekend breakdowns, uh, return policies, and key contacts. Uh, and so just as we get started, I will tell you that in the left front pocket of your three ring binders, you have a set of the slides that are up behind me as we go forward today. And you're welcome to either follow along on the screen or in the slides, whichever is more uh, convenient for you. I'm also going to refer extensively to the manual that's in the three ring binder, and we'll talk about that in various ways. But essentially, all of the details around the appeal for the three major appeal weekends, the introduction, the commitment, and follow-up weekends are there, plus there are some prayers of the faithful and bulletin inserts for pre-appeal that go in at the end of the month of January, uh, and some other processing things here at the end. But generally speaking, the appeal helps pay for the operating expenses of the archdiocese. Now, there are 10 parishes who have begun the new One Church, Many Disciples capital campaign. Um, Epiphany, St. James, uh, the three parishes based in, in, in um, Elgin, uh, sorry, in uh, Enid, which are St. Francis Xavier, uh, St. Gregory's, and St. Michael and Goltry. We have Our Lady of Victory in Purcell, um, uh, St. Mark's in Norman, St. Monica's in Edmond. Those parishes, those 10 parishes, they're going to do the appeal as well, but their timeline is going to be slightly delayed. We're gonna let them finish up the campaign here in January, February, March, and then the appeal letters for their parishioners won't go until April and go beyond. So that's the general idea. So everybody else is in the same time frame. And all there's about 40,000 letters that have been mailed uh, as of last Friday to households throughout the diocese in every parish. And that's what we call letter one. And it's in the mail. And that's a letter from Archbishop Coakley with a brochure on the campaign, uh, on the annual appeal, telling about what, what's funded by the appeal um, and how it impacts ministry in the diocese. So the ministry priorities for 2018, and you're welcome to... Uh, there's some, so, several places around there. I think some of you have them on your table. But everybody will, will have received in the mail this brochure. It's, it'll be bigger than the one that, that we have here. But essentially, in the brochure, it talks about the various ministries that we have uh, focused on in the appeal this year, but including youth, young, adult, and campus ministry, the new Blessed Stanley Rother Institute, uh, children's evangelization in Catholic schools, marriage and family life, vocations. Uh, seminarians, clergy support, formation, uh, and then the Guatemala mission, which we support on an ongoing basis where Father Rother was, and then local Hispanic ministry. 
The new name on that list, obviously, is the Blessed Stanley Brother Institute. And recently, the Archdiocese was able to hire two of the faculty members from St. Gregory's University. We've hired Dr. Jason Fujikawa and Dr. Alex Schrempf, who were the head of the theology department and the philosophy professor at St. Greg's. And they're going to basically fill the roles which were marriage and family life and uh, formerly um, the pastoral uh, uh, I guess uh, Sister Diane Corey's job was uh, pastoral ministries. And basically we've created this concept of a new institute, which will involve catechetical training and formation for parish volunteers, staff, and others throughout the diocese, including, for example, they'll be part of the diaconate formation process training program going forward. Uh, so everything from the diaconate program, we have currently 38 men studying for the diaconate. Uh, all the way through to parish space volunteers trying to help ele elevate our educational knowledge about um, as, as catechists. So that, that institute will be developed over the, year, over the next year and beyond, but know that the institute is only made possible because of gifts to the annual appeal. We will actually use those dollars um, in the appeal. So I'm often asked why people should consider giving to the Archdiocesan Annual Catholic Appeal. Um, and I think there's a lot of different reasons, but fundamentally there's a, a real difference between who we are as Catholics with our concept of a local church being a diocese in the Archdiocese of Oklahoma City, 108 parishes and missions working together collaboratively versus what the, our Protestant brothers and sisters have. Uh, and, and I grew up in Amarillo, which is four hours from here, and all of my friends were Baptist and Church of Christ, and they all thought I was going to hell because they didn't believe Catholics were Christians. But their, their style of governance and their style of leadership in, in the average Protestant church is very different than what we have as Catholics, right? So the idea of a bishop, an apostle, being the local pastor is a different concept that we have that those, those uh, denominations don't have. So as we go forward, one of the things that I think this could be is a teachable moment about who we are as Catholics and how our church is structured. And um, it, it's amazing to me how often I come across folks who have no concept of what a diocese is. And, and, and you even, even the word diocese or archdiocese, not knowing what those words mean and what they are. So I really do think that th it's a teachable moment as we go forward with the idea of supporting diocesan level ministry. Um, the annual budget of the diocese for the current fiscal year is $9.3 million. And there's a finance council at the diocese, just like there's a finance council in every parish. That finance council works with the leadership of the archdiocese, with, with the archbishop, and goes through the budget process to create the dynamic of ministry uh, funded at the diocesan level. The single largest item in the diocesan budget is the vocation and seminary and education formation program. That includes everything from Father Bittner's uh, posters for vocations and helping promote the idea of vocations uh, to the, the s summer um, internship programs or summer uh, placements at parishes for seminarians that are already in the system. Um, and everything in between, sending guys to Mexico to learn Spanish or sending guys on uh, trips abroad. Just know that all of that combined in seminary and education and formation, as with many dioceses, is our largest single line item in our budget. And we, we spend money on a lot of things, but, but as a practical matter, one of the biggest items is formation of seminarians. Um, the diocesan budget gets funded by three sources. Uh, one is investments on income. So over the years, the diocese has inherited property or bought and sold property and has been able to save money for that, that we have in financial reserves. And those reserves are invested and produce some income. So this, this year, our budget is to spend $3.7 million in, financial, uh, in income from our financial reserves. The second from the bottom there is, is parish assessments. This is a 5% tax on parish offertory. And I will tell you that is among the lowest in the country. Um, I was just at a conference in San Antonio this last week and people could not believe that we still have a 5% bishop's ass uh, assessment on parish offertory. Most dioceses are in the eight to 12% range and some are as high as 23%. So ours is pretty darn low. And the discussion in 2016 leading into the 2017 appeal became should we raise assessments on parish offertory or can we significantly increase the annual Catholic appeal? Because we were becoming more and more dependent on investment income. And that's fine in a good year, but in a bad year, if investments go down, our income goes down. And so we, we agreed in 2017 to raise the goal 
uh, to $3.5 million. Now, we had raised just under $3 million in the previous year. In 2016, if you look at the third line there, received, we received $2,968,000 in total cash um, for the, the 2016 calendar year for the annual appeal. We set the goal at uh, $3.5 million, so basically $500,000 and a bit more than we raised. And I will also tell you that our largest donor died, and so we had another 170000 to raise going into the, the 2017 year. So all up, if you include our, our that gift we had to replace, we raised about 570000 more in 2017 than we did in 2016. The, the cash received was $400,000 more year over year. Uh, the number of donors increased by about 422. Um, our average in gift went up by $37 to $386, all positive trends in 2017. It was an amazing year of success in the annual appeal, which is a, a, a wonderful place to start. If you look in the manual on page 10, every parish goal for 2018 is listed by parish in alphabetical order here. Um, and those goals... We'll talk about it in a minute, but let me just also finalize some thoughts about the 2017 appeal. So when we do the appeal, the, the, there are several ways we raise money in the appeal. The first and, and most lucrative in terms of the, the dollars raised in the appeal is the first letter that comes from Archbishop Coakley, the one that's in the mail today. That letter, along with a brochure and a reply card, goes to every household in the Archdiocese that's registered. So about 45,000 households in total. That letter last year raised about 1.7 or $1.8 million of the total amount we raised. The second most effective piece is the in-pew process, which we will talk about more and which all of you are asked to participate in. But the in-pew process is the second biggest piece of the appeal that raised about a million and a bit, million three. And then the third process that, that helped raise money significantly last year is letter two. If you look on the slide behind me, last year we sent a letter two, but we did it a little differently. We asked pastors, would you let us on parish letterhead with your signature send a letter to those people who haven't responded? And we had 72 letters that went out for parishes and missions, and another 41 we didn't get the pastor letter done, so we did it from the archbishop. But it's very clear in those 72 we were more effective than had the, the archbishop signing it himself. People have already gotten one letter signed from the archbishop. Having the pastor send a second follow-up letter was very effective and very helpful. And so in years past, we've raised about $100,000 in letter two. This year, we raised almost a quarter of a million, so two and a half times what our normal amount raised is. So that was a huge increase and a very big help from pastors who agreed to sign that letter, and that second letter process worked very well. The other process that's fairly new to the archdiocese that we're trying to encourage at the parish level for offertory and that we're trying to encourage for all giving is more online gifts. And as you can see from the statistic behind me, the average gift was $504 for those people who gave online, significantly higher than the average overall. Our lowest average gift are made from in pew gifts. Above that is the response to the letter. And above that is online giving with an average gift of $504 per family who gave online. Um, two years ago, and before I, in 2015 and before, we did not accept online gifts for the annual appeal. We are now regularly moving in the direction of, of promoting and expanding that. Um, by contrast, I'll tell you the Diocese of Austin, Texas, where I have some friends who, who run the appeal there, they're now receiving 25% of their total income from online gifts. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but let me just, as a final review, show you the trend for income to the annual appeal over the years. 2013, we raised $3.1 million. You can see it bounced around a bit. And in 2017, we're at 3.37. So we're trying to uh, move forward. So parish goals. So as you reflect on the parish goals that you have on page 10 of the, the manual, let me just tell you how we get to a parish goal. We take the parish's total offertory. So let's just say that a parish has a total offertory of $500,000 for the whole year. That's Sunday collections and holy days. And we take that as a percentage of the total diocesan offertory from all 108 parishes and missions. Let's say that's $20 million. So 500,000 
out of 20 million, that's a two and a half percent number, right? So two and a half, 500,000 is two and a half percent of 20 million. We apply that two and a half percent times the appeal goal of $3.6 million to come up with the annual Catholic appeal goal. So it's either that number or what the parish raised last year with a small increase of 2.25%. Now what that means as a practical matter is that these parishes, there were 32 parishes that made, uh, oversubscribed their goal last year. <coughs> if you assume their offertory maintained the same, then those 32 parishes would have a goal based on what they raised last year plus a 2.25% increase. If a parish's offertory is significantly up or significantly down, it will impact that number. So for example, if a parish over the last several years, their, inc their offertory has increased dramatically, their annual appeal goal will consistently go up with their trending offertory as well. So in 2018, some of the new things that we're gonna do is that our goal went up slightly to uh, 3.6 million. We're asking parishes to create a volunteer parish appeal team, which includes the pastor, an administrative contact, and a parish appeal chair. If you look on page 15 of the manual, you'll see job descriptions for the pastor, the parish appeal chair, and the administrative contact. We're working this year on a more automated process and processing system for our gifts. We're doing significantly more trainings this year. Last year we did four or five, this year we're doing nine. Uh, Lisa and I went to Elk City and to Woodward. We've, we've been to Guymon, we're gonna go to Ardmore, we're gonna go to Perry. So we're trying to get more geographically dispersed in the archdiocese and to provide training to more people. The other major change for this year is that we're going to an offsite processing model. And what that means is that I guarantee you, people are gonna ask you, pastors especially, they're gonna say, why does this envelope say that the, my campaign gift is going to Connecticut? And the answer is we've hired a firm that specializes in diocesan appeals. They work in about 50 dioceses across the country and they're gonna process gifts for us this year. Now that we're doing this for two reasons. The first is that last year, we got 10 weeks behind in processing here. Even by hiring temporary staff, we were well and truly behind and we didn't get people thanked for going on three months last year in certain instances. And that was not good in terms of being responsive to our donors and to being responsive to you as pastors to tell you where you are in the appeal process. We, we will be able to turn things around much faster by using um, a vendor. But the second issue gets back to the committed versus paid amount last year. Because we were so far behind, people made 10 month payments or 10 month pledges. Well, we didn't get some of those people billed until May which means they didn't have the full 10 months of the year to make their 2017 appeal. And so we're off by about $100,000 of pledged versus paid. And that's large, our own, largely our own, pro, our own fault, not the donor, but our own fault because we didn't bill people in the time that we said we would. So we're gonna to try to address those this year with an offsite processing vendor. Um, the three person team, the pastor, we're asking you to prepare for the appeal weekend. Uh, for both the introduction announcement weekend and the commitment weekend. The follow-up is a much easier task, at the, in which we'll talk about in a second. Make sure that you guide the in -pew process. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk this through, but why don't you take a quick look at page, um, 20, sorry, if you go to page 30, for those pastors that are interested, and, and this is purely up to you whether you want to use it or not, we do have a draft homily talking uh, points here, some notes for a potential homily in English and in Spanish based on the readings of the day that would lead into what is on page 31, which is the script for the NPU solicitation process. It is very clear in those parishes where the pastor does a brief homily and then walks people through the envelope itself we have a better response. We're actually asking you to, as a pastor, to physically take one of these envelopes, take the form off, and walk people through the form. The first step is making a pledge, then printing name, address. We've added some data to the form this year because what we're finding is it's very difficult to identify the person who fills this out in our database. So we added, for example, date of birth and an email address. And the reason we did that is to help us identify who that's coming from. 
Just as an example, I think there are nine people named Bill Smith at Christ the King Parish. It's very challenging to find who that Bill Smith is and who that gets applied to. So just know that's what our, our goal is there. The second thing that we're asking pastors to do is give people the time and walk them through and ask them to do it in mass to fill out the payment form. The first option on the, on the pledge form is, Matt, you wanna come pass these around for me? The first option on the pledge form is for an automatic ACH withdrawal from a checking account or savings account that can use a voided check or they can write in your account number and routing number. That is the cheapest processing we do. We don't have to pay for postage to send a letter uh, out to say, here's your statement and, and pay it back and then pay for staff to process. We, we don't have to pay for fees. That's free to us because our bank does it for free. The second option is credit card, which is again, still a better process than people who pay by pledge with a check over time. Then we have online giving, telephone, and then by check. We will still obviously still take checks, but what I'm asking you to do and what we're all trying to encourage all of our benefactors to do is do more electronic giving. The efficiency of that in terms of processing over time is significant. Finally, we're asking the pastor to lead the parish in the appeal prayer in the, in the weekends involved. The appeal chair. <coughs> this is a volunteer role in the parish. What we're asking is for you to appoint a volunteer who can help in the appeal weekend. Now this is for several reasons. Third party endorsement is always good. But frankly, I can't tell you how many times I have a pastor say, I'm on top of the details, I do all that, I, I meet with the ushers, I do this, I do that. Until Saturday afternoon at two o'clock before the appeal weekend when a family has a tragedy and you have to leave the parish and go deal with the family tragedy. It happens with pastors all the time. And so what we're asking you to do is have a volunteer who takes that burden off of you and, and agrees to be there for the masses on appeal weekend and help the process. So on the announcement weekend after communion, we're asking that appeal chair to stand up and say, you know, I'm Matt, me and my wife Kayla are members of the parish. We strongly believe in what we do here at the parish and we contribute to the parish. We also know that there's great ministry here in the archdiocese that helps us with catechists, that helps Father Rex when he retires. Um, all of the things that we do uh, as a, as a co in collaboration with other parishes and we are, are committed to helping that process and that's why we give the appeal. This weekend in the bulletin, there's an announcement about all the things that the appeal funds and we hope you'll take this home and prayerfully consider coming next week prepared to make a gift to the annual Catholic appeal. Again, the announcement weekend is about telling about the ministries involved and we'll get to that in just a second. The other thing that the appeal chair can do is simply be a resource of a answering questions. The schedule, I think you all know the, the letter from Archbishop Coakley is already in the mail, but the announcement weekend is February 4th, commitment weekend is the 11th, and follow-up weekend is the 18th. Before announcement weekend, we wanna get posters up in the mail. So you all have, by the way, in your box over here, you have a DVD of the annual appeal video. We also have um, the, the video is online for any of you who want it to stream online. We also have in a tube like this, there are three posters, English, Spanish, English on one side, Spanish on the other for all of you. So there's a couple of tubes of posters over there for you to be able to put those up and promote the appeal going into the appeal weekend. If you flip to page, uh, 21, 21 has kind of pre-announcement weekend um, uh, bulletin insert and prayers of the faithful intercessions. Then starting on page 22 is the announcement weekend detail. And so step by step here, we've tried to, to give you all the detail you could possibly want or need to help uh, implement the appeal. And so there's obviously things in both English and in Spanish. Pastor's introduction. Now, Archbishop Coakley will do a little homily for a, the announcement weekend. Some of you may wanna use that, some of you will not. It is absolutely up to you, it's completely optional. What I will tell you is that several of our missionary priests in particular asked for him to do that and it's been very helpful to them. So you can choose to use it or not, but it, if you use it, it's one, yes sir. What were you? It's written, It's gonna be both. It'll be audio and a letter. So we did the same last year and we'll, we'll have that distributed in a couple of weeks. But essentially, um, Archbishop will do both, either a written letter 
or um, an audio homily, and people can use either one. I will tell you, he was in no hurry to do that. Um, he had lots of feedback from pastors that they did not want to use the tape at Mass, which I understand. Not everybody's going to, and it's completely optional, but there are those who it is helpful. Um, the, um, the presider is basically being asked for people to learn about and pray about what they're going to do in the appeal. In the back of your um, manual, in a plastic sheet here, or for those of you online, there's a downloadable form. And, and by the way, everything in this manual is downloadable from the appeal website, which is archokc.org slash appeal. But this is a two-sided flyer that we're asking you to print and put into the bulletin the weekend of the annual Catholic appeal. This will allow people to see what are the ministries funded, to learn more about those ministries, and to have some detail about where their money's going to go. The following weekend is Commitment Weekend. Up to this point, they've heard about the appeal. <coughs> they've heard about why it's important. Some may even have pledged in the mail. Now it's the time to ask the rest of parishioners to be involved with giving their financial support. Um, and the pastor is critical to this process. I will tell you that when I... Um, was in Chicago. My family and I moved here from uh, the Archdiocese of Chicago. The parish we were in, St. John of the Cross, <clears throat> was one of the top annual appeal parishes every year in the Archdiocese. And I, I one day asked the pastor why they were so, what, how, how did they end up on, at the top every year? Because they weren't, weren't the wealthiest parish, but they happened to be one of the best. And he said, well, he said, as a pastor, I take it very seriously. <clears throat> and he said, no matter who's presiding, at every mass, I go and do the homily and the appeal solicitation and walk people through filling out the envelope at every mass. I'm not saying you have to do that, but I'm saying that is very effective and I hope you will consider how to be effective in the process. So you have the sample homily in English and Spanish. You have the step-by-step -step instructions on what to say after the homily. On Commitment Weekend, the key things involved are that these envelopes at every Mass get back into the pews, that the pencils that go with the envelopes go into the pews. And last year, you may remember that there was an envelope separate from a flyer. We just put them together to make it easier for you to implement the appeal this year. The <clears throat> attitude of those people giving out, out the materials. So in some parishes where there's no pews, for example, Little Flower has a giant multi-purpose room with chairs, it's very difficult to get a flyer into every chair before Mass. So having people who are proactive about handing them out during the Mass is very helpful. Um, asking people to take the time during Mass to fill out the form is important. And then giving people time to fill out the form, uh, whether they use a check, a voided check to create an ACH gift or a credit card or whatever they do, and then asking them to put them in the, in the, the envelope and then please formally take up a collection for the appeal, separate from your normal offertory. We know that some parishes do that because we get cash and coins, and they decash those and send a check from the, the parish. And then there are other parishes that don't. And certainly some people will only give cash, so we certainly would ask for you to do that uh, on, on Commitment Weekend. Um, so one of the things that I'm going to ask about Commitment Weekend is this. Anything that you can do to help encourage people to pay via ACH or credit card, but preferably ACH, that's the cheapest processing possible. For every family that does that, we will save several dollars. And I would just encourage you to think about that times 9,000 families can make a very significant difference in how the appeal works. So after the commitment weekend, the only thing to recognize about follow-up weekend is that we're simply trying to give an opportunity for those families who missed Mass to be able to give to the appeal. Um, not asking you to rerun the appeal in its total, but what we're asking you to do is to give people the opportunity who weren't there to be able to make a gift. So envelopes back in the pew for one more weekend, um, maybe some comment at the end of the homily or at the end after a communion to simply say, if you weren't able to make a gift last week, please consider doing so this week. Again, looking for participation is the key goal to the appeal at the parish level and trying to encourage more families to begin uh, giving uh, their gifts. Um, in terms of materials, we have um, the, the poster for the appeal are in the tubes that are come out to every parish. There's English one side, Spanish on the other. 
We have the in-pew envelopes, which are, there's plenty of in-pew envelopes for every parish. We also have a, the Tyvek envelope, which um, is used for processing. And I'll talk a little bit about processing now. So our goal in processing is to properly record and acknowledge every gift that comes in and do it in a timely manner. We shifted this year to an off-site vendor, and the reason we did that is because last year, frankly, we got very behind. Even hiring additional temporary staff, we were about 10 weeks behind at one point at the peak of the appeal last year. It's just simply very difficult to process 9,000 gifts, 9,000 pledges at the same time uh, in a very short period of time with a staff that's not used to doing that. So we've hired a vendor, they're, in, they're called Letter Concepts, and their offices are in, in Connecticut. They work with about 50 dioceses around the country, which is why we use them. They're experts in diocesan appeals. So both the individual little letter and the Tyvek envelope, which um, is where we're asking people to put the appeal gifts into, goes to our, our directly to our processing vendor. And so the, the, <clears throat> the kinds of gifts that we're asking you to process are basically four kinds of, of, of gifts. One is loose cash and coins. So if you take up the collection at the end of commitment weekend, so you've done the homily, you ask people to fill out the form, they've put their gift in the envelope, and you take up a collection at the time, some people will put cash in the collection. So we're asking you to do that formal process of taking up the annual Catholic appeal, and then taking whatever cash and coins are there, deposit them into the parish account, and write a parish check for that amount made out to the annual Catholic appeal. The second kind of, of gifts that come in are checks without an envelope. So some people will write a check and just stick it in the collection basket. And those checks just need to be bundled together, rubber band, and put into the Tyvek for processing. The sealed envelopes that come in, remember, we're trying to be PCI compliant, which is related to credit card fraud and security. So once somebody has put the pledge form in the envelope and sealed it, it needs to stay sealed until it's opened by the secure mailhouse lockbox service uh, in Connecticut. So the sealed envelope goes in the Tyvek and the Tyvek goes in the mail. It's prepaid postage. There's no reason not to use several of them. We, have, we give every parish 15 of them for the appeal processing. If you need more, call, we'll give you more. But the quicker it gets to the processing vendor, the more quickly people are acknowledged, thanked, and billed. There's also the potential that somebody would fill out a form but not have an envelope. And I would just encourage you to put those in an envelope and then put them in the Tyvek. Again, bundle them together and send them on their way. The, um, <clears throat> The final thing is about gift acknowledgement. Um, the Archbishop will send a letter to every family that makes a pledge to the appeal. So those will be processed as we get them in. And then in February of each year, we send a tax receipt for giving in the previous year. So February 2018, we'll send a tax receipt out to all the families who gave in 2017. And the same will happen next year. All of the materials for the appeal are located on the Archdiocesan website at archokc.org slash appeal. So they're very easy to find and everything's downloadable. So all the intercessory prayers, all the bulletin announcements, uh, even the campaign poster, which some parishes have digital um, monitors, those are available in digital format to be used um, uh, uh, from the website. In terms of final steps, in terms of tips for success, there's just a couple of things I would say. One is that whatever you can do to encourage participation is absolutely the most helpful. Strive for 100%. Um, the more families giving at, at any level, the better off we all are. Um, if you can use the, the annual Catholic Appeal video, which has been done, to tell the story about what the appeal funds, um, it's got two great stories about the three young men who have been involved at Our Lady Guadalupe camp for the last 15 years and are now directors at camp and the impact of the camp on their lives. And it also tells the story of Deacon Kelly Edwards, who became Father Kelly Edwards, thanks in large part to gifts made to the appeal funding his seminary and education. Um, using a volunteer, a third party volunteer, the Paris Appeal Chair, to do both the announcement weekend com comments and just help generally get make sure that the ushers get the envelopes in the pew ahead of time, et cetera, um, is highly recommended. If you need any help, please feel free to call our office of Stewardship and Development. That number is 709-2745, 405-709-2745, or the email address is simply stewardship at archokc.org. Thank you for everything you've done, and thank you for your participation.